Hello, and I wanted to talk basically a little bit about some issues that I had on the Tronxy build. Uh, I'm going to do three videos, kind of make it a little bit shorter. Um, this one specifically is going to be on nozzle heating and is some issues that I had and some things that you can do to make it better. Um, one of the biggest things dealing with heating the filament is stability. You want to have something that's nice and stable and ramps at a known rate and holds the temperature at the correct temp to basically melt the plastic in a known consistent manner. Because the biggest issue that you have is that the 3D printer doesn't know, it has no idea how much filament's going out. So you need to be able to judge that so you can get routinely good prints. Um, I'm not going to be going through everything hardcore. This is mainly just to give you some information and there's lots of videos out there that can do way better than I can do. Um, you've got Tom, Angus, which is Maker's Muse, the Noob, um, Maker Noob, and uh, 3D Printing Nerd. They all do really good videos. This one is just for some people that uh, happen to stumble upon my little corner of the internet. So. Temp stability, the first thing I noticed was when I was trying to get the nozzle ramping to temp, it was missing it by a couple degrees. Uh, and it was fluctuating kind of large between two and three degrees. And when I started playing with part cooling, which I'll get to in another video, I was really starting to have a hard time getting it to maintain solid temp. So that got me a little bit confused. Uh, I'm used to a CR-10. It was all dealing with what's called PID, uh, PID uh, control, which is really, think of it as kind of a closed loop system where it determines with numbers how to get up to a certain temp and how to maintain that temp. There's a lot of videos out there that'll actually describe it way better than I could ever do. Um, so I, I knew that I needed to do something, so the first thing I wanted to do was stabilize the temperature. And quite often when you set up a new nozzle, new hot end, uh, dramatically increased temperatures, like going, say, not on this printer, but if you were, say, going from PLA to ABS and all that, sometimes you'll actually want to do what they call PID tuning. Um, and even after a month, you would sometimes want to do that because the heat characteristics of everything will change over time. So I went into manual control. I've got an Octoprint server set up on, on the thing now. i um, not going to probably do a video on that. Uh, we'll see. Um, and you basically go into a line item and or a line command line and you can do a M303 I believe is what it is. It's sending a command to the um, to the board on your controller to actually do a PID calibration and what it does is it'll actually without going into everything it will go in and ramp your your hot end up, up to a certain temperature and it'll do that a few times and it maps out what it does to get there and then it gives you some values a P, I, and D value i.e. PID um, you take those numbers and you can put them into the firmware and then that is giving you good ramping values and it, it allows you to get a better ramp. You don't overshoot, you don't undershoot. Um, you get to the temperature nicely and you can stay stable there. That's the desire. So what I did was I did the calibration and that all worked fine, but nothing changed. And when nothing changed, it really made me wonder what was going on. So, of course, enter Google. I did a bunch of research, started reading around, looking for stuff, and come to find out there's three, four heat management settings that are on the Tronxy, on the Repetier uh, board, or the firmware. The thing ships in what they, it's basically a three, which was called dead time. Uh, I'm not 100% sure how the dead time works. There's some arguments out there of what's better, either PID tuning or dead time. All I'm going to tell you is my personal experience, and when I used the dead time, it was not ramping very well, and I was consistently two to three degrees low. 
that's my cat. So then once I got into the dead time and I realized that, that I couldn't get the PID to control, it was because it was in dead time. And when it's in dead time, it's not actually con using the PID numbers that I put in. So after some digging, and it was harder than I, it should have been, I figured out the differences and there's four menus. It's zero, one, two, three. And it's bang, bang, <laughs> PID, slow bang, and dead time. I'm not going to get into all the different ones. They, they were interesting. There's just different versions and different ways of controlling the temp. I selected PID. It started using my numbers and my um, hot end started stabilizing way better than it was. Um, it does overshoot a little bit now and then come back down, but for my purposes on this printer, I don't have any issues with that. So we're going to go through the uh, setup to change the heat management settings from the default of um, dead time to PID capabilities. And this is my nice little setup um, right next to my CR10. And we're going to go in, hopefully you'll be able to see this. And I'm going to go, you hit the middle, bu the middle button here and it takes you down and you're going to go to calibration which is at the bottom. What configuration? You do a right arrow to go into that. We're going to go down to the extruder. And now you're going to step down until you see control. Control, if you cycle through, if I go to the right arrow, now I can cycle through and it's going to show zero. It, the first one, if you arrow all the way down, is bang bang. You go up, it's PID, the next one is slow bang, and the default is dead time. That's the way you, it's probably going to be on your printer. So you're going to want to basically come down to what's called PID, and then you do right arrow to select that. And these are the three that I was talking about, P, I, and D. Um, and these are the numbers that you're going to get given to you if you do a manual command of M303. Um, to your printer. The issue is you have to be able to do the the manual control which means you're gonna have to run something like Octoprint or um, connect in through Repetier or one of some other program to allow you to have a command line control. But there's other videos out there to do it uh, or send me a message or something and I can try and help as needed. Uh, but once you have that set up uh, that should be about all you need. There shouldn't be any other issues and at that point it'll use your numbers and be a lot more stable. So that's how to basically set up the heat manager to use PID control. You don't need to do it. You could probably de do decently with dead time. Um, I mainly had an issue when I started using the parts cooling which I'm going to do the next video on and it, the hot end was really having a hard time controlling and it would, I would just drop and lose a ton of heat on my hot end which was causing printing issues. Um, so hopefully this will help you. If you have any issues you can let me know. Otherwise I do appreciate you watching and I hope you get something out of it. Thank you much and you have a wonderful day.